Welcome, my political friends of the interwebs. Today's discussion is going to be all about GMOs. Um, one of my subscribers left a, a message in uh, on one of my videos. I don't even remember which one. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the subscriber's name. But he asked me how I felt about GMOs. And I told him at the time I would be definitely doing a video on that. And, and GMOs, if you've been a subscriber over at Mad Bad Voodoo, you know I've, I've had videos out on GMOs before. So some of you this won't be a big surprise to. But... Um, but I'm going to go ahead and throw this out here on the Colonel Richard Hunter channel. I am completely 100% against GMOs. Now, for those of you who do not know what GMOs are, they're genetically modified organisms. Um, you may have heard the term Frankenfood before. And basically, it's where companies like Monsanto take, oh, I don't know, they take um, gene splices or, or gene sequences from, let's say, a carp, you know, the fish. And then they'll take that carp genetics and they'll implant it into, uh, into the DNA of a tomato. And for whatever reason. And maybe it makes that tomato resistant to a certain blight, you know, or whatever. Um, they, and it's basically genetically modifying that vegetable. So the tomato you buy in the grocery store, you may not even know it. But it may have carp DNA in it. And, and that's just one example. It could, God only knows what kind of, of stuff they could be. Here's the thing. The companies that do this, and I'm just going to use Monsanto as a perfect example, but a lot of them do it, like DuPont. There's actually a ton of, uh, of seed manufacturers and chemical companies that are doing this stuff. But Monsanto probably is the biggest and has uh, the worst reputation. They spend a lot of money on lobbyists uh, to lobby the government to make sure that uh, labeling isn't happening. Because, you know, one of the things a lot of people wanted, including myself, was we wanted labels. We wanted there to be something on the product. So for example, if I went to the grocery store and I bought six ears of corn, I wanted to know that this was the kind of corn I grew up on. It's the kind of corn my grandparents grew up on. Not corn with, you know, some kind of a toad's genetics, you know, uh, spliced into it. You know, here's the thing. And now I know, and, and I've talked to, when I did, when I've done GMO videos before on my Mad Bad Voodoo channel, I have talked to people who uh, were farmers. And they said, hey, now listen, GMOs getting a bad rap. They're awesome. Blah, 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 blah. Now, not every farmer feels that way. But I can understand how some farmers would feel that way because it does apparently have a, a, a positive impact on crop yields. So, you know, if you would normally get X amount of bushels from, from an acre of your land, and, and, and now, you know, now with the GMO uh, uh, seed, you get, you know, 40% more. And I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know what, what the difference would be. But apparently it's good enough to where farmers really like it. You know, um, and, and I understand that. You know, I mean, from a pure, you know, uh, you know, from a pure fiscal standpoint, I get it. It's more money for you. But something deep down inside tells me that we should not be messing with the genetics of crops. Here's the thing. Once you let that genie out of the bottle, there's no going back. I mean, you know, unfortunately, people, well, maybe you don't understand this, but take corn, for example. Corn's a perfect example. You take a corn field, okay, and it's got traditional corn. Let's even say it's, um, it's uh, you know, corn seed that's been in your family for three generations. Same corn seed you've always used. And then you got a farmer in, in you know, the, the next county who's using this genetically modified frankenseed. And you get a good wind blowing. And the pollen from the frankenseed, from that, that modified corn, you know, floats over to the, uh, to the corn that's the, that's the heirloom corn, corn. And what's it do? It, com it completely bastardizes it. It turns that corn into the franken corn. You know, and that's a problem for me. I just, you know, they can't contain it. And when you can't contain something, that's a problem. And, you know, here's the thing. We don't know. We don't. There's not been enough research. We don't know, ultimately, what the end result of ingesting this food into our bodies is going to do to it. Now, there are people that will tell you, well, you know, you're being an alarmist. You're being a freaked out person. This is bullshit because, you know, what, what possible problems could you have from putting a carp's DNA into a tomato's DNA? Well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> That's part of the problem. <laughs> I don't know what kind of problems we could have. You know, we know what corn does to us, okay, because, you know, human beings have been eating corn for millennia. We don't know what genetically modified corn does to us. 
you know, and I would almost be an almost. Actually, I wouldn't be, but I, I, I would have a less of an argument, I think, if there would be labeling. But Monsanto and DuPont, all these big corporations, you know, and hey, listen, I don't bag on corporations very often unless I feel the need to, you know. Um, but these, these big corporations, they're literally spending tens of millions of dollars on lobbyists every year to make sure things like food labeling doesn't happen, you know, because they know. They know your average consumer, if given the choice between something that's been freakicized, you know, it, it, versus something that, that they trust and know and they've been eating for years and their grandparents ate it and their great-grandparents ate it, you know, and nobody got, you know, cancers or anything like that. They're not going to, most, most normal people will not choose to get the Franken food. They just won't. Now, listen, I, please don't confuse this with, with the plant modifications that's been going on for, from, from the beginning of time. We're not talking about cross-pollination, and we're not talking about messing around on that level. We're talking, about, we're, we're talking about messing around on the DNA level. We're talking about splicing genes from, from one species to another species and doing things that we really have no clue. Really, we have no clue what it's going to mean to us in the long run. You know, and here's the thing. With my example with the corn. You know, if you get, uh, if, if, if let's say one day we find out, oh hell, you know, this, um, you know, this, this particular corn that Monsanto created is causing, you know, liver masses, you know, or, or whatever, kidney failure. We don't know. Let's just say it's causing some kind of cancer. Now you've got a, a strain of corn that's, that's every year, there's, you can't get rid of it. So it's going to be like a weed. You know, and that pollen every year will will catch a good good ride from a good stiff breeze, and it, it'll spread. And there's no way to put that genie back in the bottle. You know, now I don't know how many years of research that it would take to make me feel comfortable, but I do know one thing: it's a lot more than what they're doing now. You know, and until then, we should have the right to to know what we're eating. If if you've got a tomato that's got a carp gene in it, I'm sorry, it should be labeled. And for the FDA to say that, well, it's a tomato. No, it's not a tomato. It's not a tomato. It's a franken tomato or whatever the hell you want to call it. That's my feelings about it. You know, and like I said, I do understand the farmers. I understand. But, you know, not every farmer, by the way, is pro-GMO. Not everyone. In fact, there is a, there is a story out there. Uh, I don't remember where I read it. I read it, read it probably a year and a half ago where a farmer had saved his seeds every year. And he'd done that, and that's the way he'd learned it from his father, and his father learned it from his father, and back generation after generation, there were a certain amount of seed from their crops every year that they saved, okay? So that would be the seed that they would use the next year for planting. Well, there was a genetically modified crop uh, planted in, in a, a neighboring farm that managed to hitch a ride uh, with the winds and, and cross-pollinate with, with their crops. Well, Monsanto came in there and sued that farmer and would not allow them to use it. In fact, one had paid for the seeds uh, because apparently, you know, they're patented and all this nonsense. And I think that farmer actually lost the suit. And then he wasn't able to co collect the seeds. And from that point on, he had to buy seeds, which, guess what? That's a real big win for Monsanto. Very big win. Monsanto doesn't want people saving seeds. They want people buying seeds. That's what they. That's one of the things that they do. One of the many things that they do as a, as a corporation is sell seeds, genetically modified seeds to create gen genetically modified crops. So, I know there are not. I know for a fact because I've done this before. There's there's going to be people who are not going to agree with me on this. Uh, but there's. I think if you just search your soul, feel your gut, because something in my gut tells me that this isn't right. This just isn't right. You know, I mean, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. And, you know, and, and how bizarre is it that they can create a crop that you can dump a herbicide onto, just bathe it in, in, in pesticides and herbicides, and it will kill everything except for that particular crop. It just seems, I just don't know. One of the reasons that I grow a garden every year. Now, I'm not one of those people that's got to be organic, 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 because I think that a lot of the organic labeling is nonsense. I think a lot of it's like, for example, bananas. 
you know, I, I remember seeing uh, organic bananas, and I don't remember now what they were a pound, but I want to say they were like 89 cents a pound or maybe 99 cents a pound, and they were labeled, you know, they, they, they were, hey, these were healthy bananas. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is that bananas don't need any kind of pesticide or herbicide. I mean, bananas, bananas are one of those lucky crops that, that that's not an issue. So, you know, to buy organic bananas is pissing your money away. And, and I think a lot of the stuff, to be honest with you, that's labeled organic is bullshit. Now, what comes in my garden, what I grow in my garden, the tomatoes, the peppers, the lettuce, all that stuff, the beans, I can guarantee you that it's 100% organic, you know, because I grow it. I never put anything on mine. Sometimes the, bug, the bugs get the better of my, uh, of my garden, and sometimes they don't, and sometimes they get their share, and that's just the way it is. And I feel comfortable with that. You know, I do. I feel comfortable with that. You know, but it, to get back to the, to the GMO thing, though, I really think that we need to start demanding that our government um, label food. The FDA has to demand that there's labels on food to let us know what the modifications are, or even, hell, even if it just labeled a GMO. Because I, for one, wouldn't be buying it. And by the way, that's, that's why, that is why Monsanto labels so hard and spends so much money to make sure there is no labeling. You know, they're, they're, they're there right there on Capitol Hill with their lobbyists, you know, spending that money. Spending that money is what, exactly what they're doing. You know, but ultimately, I think that would be a step in the right direction. I think there needs to be long-term testing. You know, a lot of European countries are, are, are banning the GMO stuff because they don't know. We don't know. You know, people can say what they want. You know, and like I said, I, I feel the farmers. I completely understand where the farmers are coming from. You know, it's all, you know, look, I'm a, I'm a capitalist. Make as much money as you can. But when you're talking about, when you're talking about food, you know, I just have a bad feeling we could screw ourselves. You know, what if a bad, what if, what if some un, un, unfortunate consequences happened with this genetically modified food? Well, let's say it didn't even kill the people or harm the people. Let's say just that, you know, all the, the, the mutations were of such that it made the, the, the food unedible or unnutritious. If, I don't know if unnutritious is a, is a word or not, but, you know, what if that happened? You know, I mean, once you let this genie out of the bottle, you ain't getting it back, and God knows where it could spread. It could spread like a plague. And, and, and you know, and that's the thing, too, and I think that a lot of countries that are against GMOs are, are really pissy about this because the things that we do in our country don't necessarily stay in our country. You know, there are, there's pollen that gets up into the wind currents and travel the, travels the globe. You know, so I don't blame other countries for being pissed off about it. So, anyway, listen, that's all I got for you. Let me know in the comment section how you feel about genetically modified organisms or Franken-food, if you will. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Maybe I'll do another one if, uh, if uh, need be. Anyway, everybody take care.